K26. It's an electric bike from the not too popular brand called Kakuka. But for $1100, actually, it has a lot to offer with entirely hidden in the frame battery and a powerful 350 watt motor. Let's inspect! <laughs> that was quite a thing. Good to meet you. Uh, I'm Michael Tech for All. We inspect Cool Tech over here. E bikes again. This one comes from a company called Kakuka, which I admit I've never heard before. K26 is the model. Promises really a lot of good features at the modest price of $1,100. So, is it good? Is it bad? Is it the right e bike for you? This is what we're talking about today. The component that really attracted my attention is indeed the frame, because the battery is entirely integrated inside. This is by far the best option for you and the most reliable when it comes to riding in wet weather and being safe from impacts from the rain. The bike really stands out for its unique design because most of the display happens to be integrated, so at the first sight it is hard to notice any difference to most hardtail mountain bikes unless you look at the rear wheel where we have the rather large motor. As far as unboxing goes, it's been a rather positive experience. Most components are well protected, there's a bit of handy work that you're gonna need to do. Weight of the box is around 30 kilos, so make sure to play it smart. As part of the assembly, you're gonna have all the parts involved in the setup process. Of course, a user guide, some tools and the charger. Well, in here, the setup cover has been rather easy. You're gonna need to fix the handlebar, install the front wheel, mount the pedals and put on the seat. Generally, getting rid of all the protective bubbles and wraps takes a bit longer than what you're gonna need to spend on the real assembly procedure. I really appreciate the fact that this bike has arrived with well-balanced brakes and well-adjusted derailleur, meaning that all you have to do before riding is to get the battery charged to full. And perhaps read the user guides, because it does contain a bunch of detailed information. I will for sure show you details about how the bike performs in real-life scenarios, but first, Shall we talk about what's present? A 350 watt brushless motor, which can maintain top speed of up to 32 km per hour, 7.5 amp per hour battery, dual disc brake, Shimano 7 speed system, adjustable front shock absorber, integrated display, 5 riding speeds, aluminium alloy frame, and all of that weighs 20 and a half kilos. Well, the spec sheet actually sounds pretty good for a budget-friendly hardtail e-bike in 2022. I think all the components are kind of alright, but if we look into the details, we're going to notice that many of them are either entry-level or close to the super budget-oriented components. For instance, the front suspension, I'm really grateful there is such. Um, I would say it's rather basic, it's coal-based. I'm not sure if it's upgradable, probably something I'm gonna find out in the process of this review. Now, focus clearly is on the frame. Because the frame, just, just look at it. I mean, very difficult to guess this is an e-bike, unless, of course, you notice this massive motor in the rear wheel. So yeah, we again do not have a mid-drive, but uh, being in the rear side actually gives you pretty good grip, especially when you go uphills. And I think the construction so far feels very solid. 26 inch tires, not too big, I'm a fan of 29ers, but it is what it is. Probably the weakest point, at least in my opinion, is the Shimano Tourney on the rear. This derailleur is the entry-level one from the Shimano product line. And about the rest of the specs, let's kind of look at them one by one. My absolute favorite feature throughout the whole time is the drive setup and the electronics. It is by far the most responsive and balanced motor rear hub installation I have experienced to date. The extra power you're gonna get is lovely, and the adjustment in 5 grades gives you a suitable amount of assistance for any type of terrain. Nicely, Kakuka have integrated a lever which provides pure electric drive mode. Now, there is the best part, you can adapt the bike towards your country's regulations by setting the speed limit at a certain value, but also the pure electric mode can be switched off thanks to the quick release cables. Where I live, requirement is pedal assistance only and speeds up to 25 km per hour, so that's fairly easy to be configured and would take no more than a few minutes. 
After praising all of that in the frame, may I highlight the display as well. It is LCD and also integrated. Angles of visibility are great and there's no need for adjusting, mounting, connecting or whatsoever. The fact that it's all integrated contributes to the clean handlebar design. There aren't too many cables to disturb you. Front shock is not too bad, good responsiveness, of course a bit behind top end models by RockShox and Fox, it is rather closer to the entry level models by Suntour. Since we're talking about the front side of the bike, I was of course curious about the battery and whether it can easily be replaced. There's a removable plate on the front, so it looks like access to the electronics is possible and yes, you can do replacements and adjustments of the battery. The front wheel, as per the documentation, quick release based, but practically I had to use the tool to dismount and mount it back. Not that it takes that much of time, but not entirely QR. Be careful not to press the brakes while the wheel is not installed, because it might take some time to fix them back. Speaking of them, they are made by the Shenzhen based company Zoom and are okay. The pads are mineral, aka quiet, and braking efficiency has been consistent. Upgrading to a better model is possible, however you're gonna have to figure out a way to enable the electronics, because the brakes are also connected to the motor management. Going to the rear side of the bike, this is where the heavyweight part takes place. The motor is definitely adding extra weight on the rear wheel, therefore I'd keep these tires at higher pressure just in case. Very modern geometry of the bike, it's suitable even for downhill riding, however don't forget about the feedback I've shared related to the fork and the weight distribution. Seat post, which is close to 27cm, was a bit low for my size, therefore buying another lengthier one makes good sense. The diameter of the seat post is 30.4mm for the record. I do like the crank set on the bike, because it has a rather balanced size and the bike is easy to ride without motor support. The e-bikes with bigger crank set are rather challenging for pedaling when the battery has no power left. Speaking of which, the ranges. I'll have to postpone the true testing for warmer weather conditions. Winter in February here in Sofia may look sunny, but temperatures are still not more than 10 degrees, so take my estimations with a pinch of salt. Gear 3 on a flat road has consumed around one third of the battery for around 15 kilometers. As soon as the weather gets warmer, I expect better endurance by at least one third. The more you support by pedaling, the greater the range, but I have to admit, using the pure electric mode is quite tempting indeed. So, which are the drawbacks that I found? Apparently the use of Shimano Turni is topping my list, the heavyweight rear of the bike, the non-hydraulic brakes and the basic suspension, but again, I find it hard to criticize because of the really modest price that you pay for such a powerful motor in such a beautiful frame. And luckily, most of these components are upgradable and replaceable, which means that you have a lot of room for improvements. So, uh, K26, what do you think? Is it a solid performer, given the really powerful motor? Or you're not too happy to see that there have been some really budget-oriented solutions? I, I, I would love to hear from you. Is it worth for 1100 bucks? Although I already know the answer, given the fact that most of the smaller foldable e-bikes cost about the same money. This, I think, sounds like a pretty good deal. Awesome frame, very nice uh, inbuilt integrated display, some sort of waterproofness and very decent performers. Probably with a few upgrades, this could become a very good choice for an e-bike. Uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below the video. Michael is my name, this is Tech for All, where we inspect fresh and cool tech. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye!